Good morning crew. Today we are up bright and early. We are getting a load ready for the semi. It's August 29th and the inventory in there is looking a little bit dismal. Uh, but hey, we still got a lot to make so it is what it is. Uh, we pulled some that we had stacked. We're lining it up on the front of the shop because what we usually do when we can't just access the barn with the semi and load it right from there is we put it in our fuel shed right there. Well, I have the fuel shed filled with first cutting on a semi that's going out. Today's Monday. That semi is going out Tuesday. Uh, and I had that all prepped and ready to go there. And I actually did that before we bailed our latest round of first cutting because the particular customer came out and tested a batch that was in the barn. Um, and we're filling one of the last barns we have for first cutting. So I didn't want to box it in. I wanted to make sure that he got the hay that he tested. So I pulled out a semi-load and tucked it in there. And so, well, now you're seeing why that barn, I can't just put it in like we normally do. We're taking bundles of a heavy alfalfa orchard mix and stacking them in front of the shop. We had to put a tarp down a little bit because I was extending out to a little bit of a damp spot. And we had a wagon that we loaded up from Spencer. This is all coming from our Spencer field that we just towed home and uh, hadn't put it away yet because I figured it would get sold before we had to put it away. And well, I was right. So now I'm just going to pull them right off the wagon and keep a pile like that. Hopefully every time a semi comes, we won't have to quite go through this whole hoopla to get it ready. That barn, as you can see from the video, is, is kind of treacherous to get into. Uh, the driveway is not very uniform it kind of racks the bundles a little bit a semi there's absolutely no way you can get in there the, the biggest trailer you're going to get in there is like a probably 20 foot max and that would be a good driver and that would be going in my mom's yard a little bit more than she'd like anyways so we just pull the bundles out here this is what we're built for the less times you can touch hay before selling them the better off you're going to be my dad doesn't ever sell anything <laughs> so we still have 17 of these wagons running around so they're actually really nice because we can fit 18 bundles in each wagon and just pull one or two home with a pickup truck and stick them in a barn and worry about them loading them later. Uh, so it's a bit of a tight squeeze with the grapple getting in there. You have to really be centered and really pay attention. And I have hit the walls quite a few times, but it doesn't do much damage or anything. They're, they're flexible. They, they're just on a cage there. This is why we love telehandlers. Reaching right in, securing the load, bringing it back out. That is a man. He just said it's called one horsepower. <laughs> so now we are going to put on our other grapple. So we can push these right in the box fan when it shows up. I like to have the grapple, the claws partially down and it partially spun so you don't have pressure on the lines. And now I'm venting the auxiliary and it should be easy to pull out for them. A little bit of a tight squeeze between the semi and the grapple here. Where are you going? So now we have the side grapple on. I believe it's called the side pack and I will pick up the first three cubes that I plan on putting in the trailer and we'll tie string around them just so they're a little extra secure and make sure they don't fall over. Because if something, you know, if it catches the floor and the top pushes over or whatever, you can lose a full two tiers you're pushing in, which helps no one. So we're just doing a little extra precaution. We have a really nice grass alfalfa mix. Orchard grass alfalfa.
So we slid the first two in there, and now Justin is in tying them together, and the rest of it should just be history. Should go in easy. What do you think, Carl? Yo. I'm doing good. How are you doing? My button's off. Of my <laughs> Why you gotta do that to the door? What are you thinking right now? I'm thinking I don't ever want to hand stack anything again. <laughs> there you go. Carl? Carl? Hey buddy? What? what are you thinking right now? Are we done yet? <laughs> Come on, you gotta turn around. <laughs> are we done yet? <laughs> Alright. in my eyes, I can't see. That's good. What do you mean you don't know? Is that, is that we use that when we can't get them to squeeze in? It's, it's the ramp thing. The them. ramp. We're gonna we're gonna ramp in the trailer. Poe, what do you think? No? Easy on my concrete driver. Pete, what are you doing, girl? Yep. Yeah, perfect. we call this the final what the final shove <laughs> the final, final shove that's what we do Where? oh 
on the nose. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jeff, is this how you used to do it when you were our age? Uh, <laughs> no. People that, to work, so. <laughs> people that wanted to work. Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. You're getting that down pretty good, dude. What helps with his particular trailer is it's a drop deck. So he's got a little bit more height on the back end. So we're not worried about up and down. So it takes a little bit of the stress out of the operator, but that was really smooth. That was right around 22 minutes. And that was with one problem bundle that was a little bit wider than the other. So we're getting down to probably a full 53 foot straight will be under 30 minutes here. And that's, that's great. That's just fine. He said he got a lot more horses. He'll be back. <laughs> 